Shalom and greetings friends. Thank you for clicking on part two titled He Hides Truth. And if you haven't listened to part one, please go back and listen to it. You can search for it on YouTube or even go to our website TorahTruthSeekers.org and go under the free video messages. It's a free learning website. There's no donation boxes and so it's for free learning. And, and this is an important topic because many believers in the Holy Scriptures get frustrated. They get deceived. They, they get upset and offended and, and divisions happen and, and splits and, and there's all kinds of problems in, in theology today, in religions today. And so we, we tend to wonder, why does not our Creator make everything so simple, just spell it out so plainly, so clearly? Why are some topics so hard to understand? Why, why is this book hard to understand? And before you try to teach from this book others and influence others, please read the whole book from Genesis 1 all the way into Revelation, at the end of Revelation, and I believe it's chapter 22. And if you're an Orthodox Jewish person out there, you haven't read the, the new, what they call the New Testament, or what we say in Hebrew, the Brit Hadashah, the New Covenant Writings, then please do so with an open mind. Are the Christians right about this Messiah? There's, a, there's even scriptures in Hebrew. The Shem Tov version of Matthew, the book of Matthew, is written in Hebrew. And you will see the false teachings that are in Christianity, and you can learn to, about the true Messiah and the true teachings that should be taught. Many rabbis have come to accept the Messiah, Yeshua, and understand the sacrifice of, of, of Him being the Pesach Lamb, and how there's a twofold coming of the Messiah that's even spoken of about in even the old, what's called the, the Tanakh, and what the Christians call the Old Covenant or the Old Testament scriptures. And uh, question yourself, why are, is Isaiah 53 not read in the synagogues? Why, when they're going through Isaiah, they'll always skip, as far as I know, Isaiah 53. Read that. If you know Hebrew especially, I encourage you and I challenge you in a very loving, brotherly way. But even as Christians and, and, and Jews and Judaism, there are so many di diversity uh, doctrines, and there's extreme liberals to extreme conservatives, and, and we're all studying the same scriptures, and even some of us studying the same translations, uh, the same publishers, and, and still coming to completely different uh, conclusions. And so in part one, I even went into the Hebrew and showed how our Creator, He hides the truth on purpose. Now, He used to speak to humanity a lot more plainly and directly, like Adam, Adam, and Cain, and Abel, and Noah, and Abraham, and, and Moses, or we say Moshe in Hebrew. But he works differently now. He, he realizes the very minority, no matter how he communicates to humanity, very few really want to be like him and are faithful and persevere to the end of their physical lifespan in that way. So he has learned that uh, we like games. We like hide and seek. And so we look at the Hebrew. I expound upon Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 2 there where he likes to hide to. It's to his glory to hide the truth and it is to our glory if we want kingship and royalty and his family and his kingdom to search out these matters and so we need to seek it first. And so I went through a lot of scriptures in part one. Uh, please when you have the time go back and listen to it if, if you have the interest and zeal and passion for truth. And as I was concluding uh, in regard to the truth, in regard to these mysteries that he has, the secrets that he has, as I pointed out from the scriptures, he has secrets, 
and he shares it with with his uh, his friends, his, his very special people, and so he will reveal these things to us not all at once, but when things are spoon fed to us too much, we tend to not appreciate the truth as much. And so he knows how much to give, and, and when we're faithful what we're given, he uh, gives us a little bit more, and we learn and grow, and it's, it's like a treasure in a field, and if you don't know where it's at, you've got to dig for it, and, and you'll even buy that field so you'll have the rights to the treasure, and spend every dollar you have if you know for sure that that treasure is there, if you have the faith that it is there, you will seek it, you will, you will give up, your own life or your own possessions to find it. And not just for yourself, but for those also whom you love. You want to love your neighbor, you want to bring him to the truth, and, and you, we need to know the truth. If we're going to help others, let's, let's learn to help ourselves as well. And so we need to love the truth. As I also point out, not only does he hide the truth in reveal his secrets and his mysteries at the right times and with whoever he wishes. Also, he sends delusions or lies to us. Now, not that he lies, but spirits will volunteer to do his work for him. And as Ahab, as I pointed out in part one, Ahab was not fearing him, was not walking in his ways, so he said, well, I want Ahab to go in battle and die in this battle. And a lying spirit volunteered said, hey, I'll go down there and lie to him and tell him it's from you. And that he'll go and prosper in this battle. And so God sends Ahab a strong delusion through the false prophets. And so we see that also in, as I pointed out in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the Apostle Shaul says that, for, if they don't love the truth enough, he will send a strong delusion that, that those who do not love the truth, they will believe lies. And so it's a test. He likes to test the righteous. He, we know that when we are tested, we are also proven, we are also grow from the tests and the trials and any difficulties that come along the way. But his truth has got to be a higher priority even a higher priority than family members, as I pointed out at the end of where I was cut off. In most uh, congregations and synagogues, you know, it's more of a social club. It seems like relationships, human relationships, are more important than truth. Now, they are important, and without love, we can't please Him. We've got to even love our enemies. But when we understand it properly, that when it comes to a priority of which is higher, truth has got to be higher than social clubs or family members. And this is what I pointed out in Luke chapter 14, where it says in verse 26, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, and here it says hate, and I expounded upon the Greek in part 1, that, that Greek word is Strong's number 3404, uh, pronounced as miseo, and it can mean to detest or it can mean to love less. And of course, we know that the Messiah will not teach against the commandments of our Creator. Those Ten Commandments, the fifth one is to honor your mother and father. So if you believe in the true Messiah, you know he wouldn't say to hate and to detest your parents, but to love less less, as even in the Greek language that has been preserved to this day and translated into English, it's uh, translated more accurately if we look at the root word there in the Greek. And so I was cut off at, and when I went back to chapter 12 of Luke here, Luke 12 verses 51 through 53, <clears throat> it says, Do you suppose that I came to bring peace on the earth. This is our Messiah speaking. Do you suppose that he came to bring peace? Well, most people would say yes if they didn't read the scripture here. He says, I tell you, not at all, uh, but rather division. Now, not that he wants division, 
Again, we we got to be careful. These wor these words of hate and and division, you know, just like when he says, "Unless you drink my blood and and eat my flesh," many people turned away from him and didn't walk with him and accept him as the Messiah anymore because it sounded like cannibalism. It sounded like you know drinking blood. That's against the Torah as well. So we need to understand the whole scriptures. That's why I say read the whole thing from cover to cover to understand some of these difficult passages because he hides it like a jigsaw puzzle. That's kind of scrambled up here. We need to put these pieces together correctly to see the picture. Some puzzle pieces look like they fit together, but they really don't. And so that's where people make mistakes with preconceived ideas going to the scriptures to believe what they want to believe. But we need to seek it with truth, regardless of the consequences, regardless of how it affects our life, but to seek it because that the truth cannot be separated from Him. He is truth. Truth is Him. You can't have one without the other. And so, here it says, For from now on, five in one house will be divided, three against two and two against three. Father will be divided against son and son against Father, mother against daughter, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, father-in-law against son-in-law. You know, of course, he's not trying to divide family. Division is not the goal, but simply understood. The mystery here is that some people will fear him and accept the truth. Others will not. And so, and even he says, no one can come to me unless the Father draws him. So sometimes he's just drawing one or two in a family or even in a congregation to the truth, to a deeper aspect of the truth. And if other people make fun of you and they say, oh, well, you're under a curse by trying to understand these things, you just believe and have faith and, and don't try to be so, so zealous and studious and, and have all this knowledge, you know, they will put you down. They will drag you down. They will not want you to grow in the truth. And we have to make sure we're not being deceived and be like the Bereans who studied the scriptures zealously daily to see if what the Apostle Paul was teaching was truth coming from him. And so we need to be like that. So division will happen. But it's a test. What is more important to you? It's all about relationships and, and a social club and a happy uh, physical family of believers. Well, that is important. We look at all the scriptures, we see that unity is important. He wants unity. But when it becomes a priority, we need to put first things first. That's why it says, seek first this kingdom of our Creator and His righteousness. If we do, everything will be added that we need. Not always our wants, not all, but we will get our needs. It's not a prosperity gospel of, of being wealthy physically, financially in this life, but you will have the blessings that you need and the peace that comes from walking in His ways. His ways are not a curse to us. Now, when we break His ways, they become the curse. We have penalties. But then the Mashiach, the Lamb, that was sacrificed for our sins, when we repent, those curses were written against us. They were nailed to that cross when we repent. When we have that attitude of obeying our Creator. In Acts chapter 5, I believe it's verse 32, it says that the Holy Spirit, the Roach, Hochadesh, is given to those who obey Him. That doesn't mean we earn it. We don't earn it as a free gift. But as He sees our obedience to what He reveals to us, He gives us more. You want more power? Do you want more of His Spirit? You probably believe you have it already, but do you want more? Well, go deeper with Him. Seek Him while He may be found. And if you're in your youth, seek Him while you, He may be found in your youth. And it, regardless of where you're at in this life, right now, learn to grow 
and, and realize that he is hiding the truth, but he wants to share them with you. He wants to share them with me. And iron sharpens iron. As we read in Proverbs 27, 17, we can sharpen each other. And, but always put him first. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. We need to know what his righteousness is. You know, all his commandments are righteousness. As he says in Psalms 119, verse 172, is the definition, the biblical definition of righteousness. And anything of our own accord and our own effort without his help is like filthy rags, of course. It's not worth very much. And, and we need, we need everything that he has to offer. His helper, his spirit, his truth. We need each other who are of like minds and hearts to grow together, to, uh, to not hate him or hate his truth or hate each other. We, even when we disagree, why can't we agree to differ and respect one another? There shouldn't be persecution. Now look at in, even in Christianity in past centuries, killing each other over disagreements and understanding these scriptures and doctrines and teachings. Torturing, murdering, you, you know, categorizing, labeling people, you know, as Judaizers. Um, you know, look at the Spanish Inquisition and even, uh, you know, even Martin Luther's thesis on titled The Lies of the Jews. You know, look at the anti-Semitic spirit that is in his thesis there. Because the Jews wouldn't accept the gospel as he understood it. Of course, it was a perverted gospel of faith alone, meaning you, you know the Torah, the laws of God, the commandments were nailed to the cross. And, and of course, we, you know, Protestant theology picks and chooses. They'll agree with nine of those ten commandments that our Creator wrote with His own finger and spoke from Mount Sinai. But one, that one about the Sabbath, well, that's just for the Jews only, and it was nailed to the cross. Gentiles don't have to do it. And there's a lot of lame excuses. Even misinterpretations of Paul's writings in Acts uh, chapter 15, the Jerusalem Conference. And I have a teaching on that. Also, um, you know, in Romans 14 and also in Colossians chapter 2, you know, verses 16 and 17, people are misunderstanding the Apostle Shaul. And they, under, don't, they have this replacement theology. And don't look at Romans 11. We're all to be of one body, one faith. There shouldn't be a difference between Jews and Gentiles. Spiritually speaking, we, the teachings, the doctrines, the understandings, we are all to be, even Paul rebuked Peter when he was not being the same with uh, Jews and Gentiles, the, the Jewish converts who had accepted Messiah. You know, we need to be of one faith, one body, one baptism, or mikvah as we say in Hebrew, immersion. And we got to give death to the old self, give it up to him, everything, to seek and to find the truth that he has hidden.